Hey everybody, it's here and here we got our ninth episode of our Colorado Avalanche franchise mode here on the PS4. Guys, in the last episode we went and did the uh, free agency of the year one, um, the, the year one um, off season. So uh, if you didn't, if you did in fact miss it, go check it out because it was pretty wild. We made some signings and I will show you the lines right now, what they're looking like. We haven't actually edited any of the lines, I'll probably do that in this episode. Um, but these are sort of what they're gonna look like in like just in general so if that gives you a good idea there's the offense there's the defense and uh, and there's our goaltending so um, I am going to be making a trade there has been a couple of comments talking about uh, trading for some certain players I want to make our defense stronger going into the season because I believe we should have one more top four defenseman if we are to compete now, first of all, I want to go through some of the main defensemen that I, that I looked at. So, first of all, we uh, went and checked with the um, Anaheim Ducks, and they have Cam Fowler, and his his overall, 87 overall, 25 years old, poten medium elite potential, so much to like about this guy, one, million, or one year at four million, for his contract so after this year we're gonna have to sign him the problem I don't like about this contract is because or the, the problem I don't like um, trading for him is because uh, his trade value along with them not along with Anaheim not wanting to give him up it just to me um, it doesn't make too much sense and even if we sign him then I, I'd assume that he'd probably play on the top defensive pairing line and you can always play lefties on the right side eventually but if we get another young defenseman like him it will will be sort of awkward on that in that area because we have quite a few younger defensemen that I think could be top four defensemen but yeah so if if it's if it's for a younger defenseman I want to make sure that we don't have to focus on signing him right now and Fowler although he'd be perfect for our team sort of it's a lot of trade value not guaranteed that we sign him and um, I don't want to play necessarily Zadorov or Bigras on, well, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter too much, but I, I don't really want to risk run the risk of Cam Fowler not coming back, sort of. And I just, I think I'm okay with playing Johnson and um, uh, I'm okay with playing Eric Johnson with Tyson Berry on the top line. Um, because last year he played on the left side, uh, Johnson, and he did very well on that side. So, uh, not Cam Fowler. Uh, I went through every NHL team, and it, that's also why this episode took a while to make. Because I, I was also pretty, I was decently busy. Um, lots of things came up during the week, and uh, and then half the time I was trying to find a defenseman. So then, uh, Habs fan, you mentioned Cody CC as well. Um, I looked at him once again one year 2.8 this is a great contract 25 over I, I saw the 23 and then I saw the 85 and I combined it to make 25 because that's what it equals right um, so 85 overall 23 years old good potential uh, well I think the I, I think the worst that he can get right now is stay around 85 maybe an 84 if he just is on a bad team or something like that and he just didn't progress because of his low potential but you know what, I think, um, although he would probably be a decent guy to go after, there's one guy that I was a bit more confident with, and I realize, guys, this is in the division. It's Winnipeg. What's the defense one they want to give up? They want to give up Jacob Truba. Now, this is around the same the same amount of trade value, I guess, but I think the main reason I like this is because he's right-handed. So no matter what, like uh, the contract's nice. At 23 years old, he can still get better. 86 overall, little elite potential. Um, I just, with this trade, Jacob Truba is like, he's sort of, I don't know. It just, I, I don't know why, but I feel like this trade was the easiest to make go through. Cam Fowler was a lot harder. Cody CC, not quite, like I want a high overall player. I wanted 86 or higher really. And Truba is there. Fowler, I mean, it's really, I think mainly the main attraction to him was the contract three years at 3.8. Uh, that's the main reason I like this, and plus being right-handed, uh, no matter what, if uh, whether it's Johnson, we eventually trade because of his contract, or if he stops performing for us in the next couple of years, we have to trade away guys. 
and he's not doing well, then we can always trade him. And then we have another righty defenseman. Hopefully by this time, these guys are ready. But if we do this, we can have Barry Johnson and then Zadarov and um, uh, Truba. So that's sort of what I thought. If it's Fowler, then it's Fowler, Barry, Johnson, Zadarov. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just even, I don't know. I just... I feel, I, I feel more comfortable trading for uh, Truba, even if it is within the division, because we're not trading too many actual roster. We're not actually trading any roster players away. I was going to trade Joel Colborn, but I realized I don't want to make our team worse at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, give them uh, some prospects that they want. They have Vizhnevsky, Budan, um, I believe goalie, it would be uh, Hallinan, and then we're going to give up a first and a second. So this seems like a lot we're giving up, and it is, it is. You just noticed, but that's why we're gonna be adding some more in. So we're gonna go and add in right winger, prospect slash player, uh, Nick Patan, because he's, uh, I test this trade out, it already works. Um, it took me actually a while to get this trade to work as well, but I just, I was determined to make it go through. Um, Patan, I like his offensive skill, and I think he can become a top six player. Um, and I like his trade value for what he is. So uh, I decided to pick him out of all the players because uh, they do have a lot of right wingers. And uh, yeah, it just I think it makes the most sense. And then I wanted to add in, I uh, believe it was a fourth round pick. And I think, I think that should be it. It looks like we're also trading a lot, but Truba's in trade value is quite a bit. So if I'm correct, this should go through. Let me see if I can add in a fifth. I wanted to see if I can do that. Okay, Vizhnevsky, Budin, Halinen, a first and a second for Truba, Patan, and a fourth and a fifth. Will it go through and sweeten the value just a touch? So if we make this a six, which I am okay with taking away because we are giving up a first and a second, will it go through? No, just a little bit low for us. You never know you can get those late round steals. So I'm going to try a seventh round pick. Will it go through? There you go. On behalf of the Winnipeg Jets organization, I accept a trade offer. We'll see you out on the ice. So you might be wondering why the heck in the world would Colorado, or sorry, would um, uh, Winnipeg be willing to trade uh, Truba? Uh, not obviously in real life. This is a year forward, and maybe Truba maybe figured out his differences. Maybe Myers on the top line, probably because he's overall wise is playing on the left side, probably or Bufflin. Um, but the thing is, if you look at all the other guys that they could get rid of. Enstrom, 32 years old, one year at 5.75. Realistically, no one's going to take that, really. I mean, unless you're desperate and then they retain cap. But it trades, computers never trade defensemen with cap. It's only if you actually implement it in your trade. So um, aside from that, Morrissey is another young defenseman coming up soon. They're going to have to sign him, so he's going to want money. Uh, Stewart, uh, they have some other defensemen that are signed. I don't know why you signed Suster to three years at 3.8. That was really dumb. And then um, they have like three more right-handed defensemen in Stone, Myers, and Bufflin. And then just to top it off, off they would have had um, realistically one, two, three, four. Well, one, one, two, three, four, and Trubo at five, and possibly more uh, uh, Morrissey at six, if you because he could progress throughout the season for guys uh, that would likely be in the top four. So I just felt like that just made the most sense. Anaheim, uh, I felt like it was less likely for them to make a trade. Ottawa, they're trying to win. So like if you actually looked at their defense, they had Cronwall as well. So Cronwall, Carlson, and then CC and that other guy. Um, uh, who was it? Not Mathot, but the other left-handed defenseman. Shoot, who was it? I really want to know now. I'm, it's on, it's in my mind. It's uh, CC, Cronwall, Phaneuf. There you go, Phaneuf. And then um, in, I believe it was St. Louis, I was also thinking of Colton Periaco, but I think that the main thing that really put me away from that was, I don't think he's going to get much better than this, and I liked, I just, I mean, I, I liked the idea of getting a guy like Truba instead, so, yeah. Um, it's sort of half doesn't make sense. It's just, you're going to get more value for Truba, so why not trade him instead of a guy like, Instrument. I mean, your right side's still solidified. Bufflin's going to play for another three years at least. You can always trade him and then get another defenseman like Truba. So, I mean, in the end, it, in the end, um, it just, I, I felt like it made sense for our team and to Winnipeg to a certain degree. So, I like the trade that happened. Hopefully, you guys uh, uh, understand why that trade was made. It took me a really long while to actually find one. And 
originally I was I was thinking like maybe something else, someone else. Um, I was really just thinking about signing a couple guys in free agency, a couple defensemen as like guys that could make an impact just if they find the right fit. But yeah, so first of all, I do actually want to sign Lubnor Vizinovsky one year, uh, one point, I believe it's 1.35, I think. We can go 1.3 see if he accepts that um although he has 70 potential and he's 41 years old uh i like his defense his poise and his offensive categories everything was like 85 solid so he could possibly be a good guy to put on the power play and even a, a solid defenseman on the top six so we'll see maybe that works out um sorry nathan christian hoff it wasn't really i think Viznovsky was better not in real life but I mean, I think that was a good option. And then another thing I want to try, actually for the AHL mainly, I was going to actually put him in the top four and see how it worked, mainly, may, or top six now that it happened uh, as a power play defenseman. But Matt Taramina, if you look at his shot, it's pretty insane. Like, accuracy, it's crazy. I looked up shot to see if I could find a guy to help out our power play. 30 years old, if you look at his AHL season last year, he was, yeah, 50 games played, 18 goals as a defenseman, 2 assists, 20 points, plus 14. So it's good to have more defensemen in the minors, and if we need to call up someone, uh, maybe he could be an option. You never know. Because, I mean, you see lots of 70 overalls in, in the, in the, uh, on the other computer team, so maybe why not try one if, if you need to make it work. So um, any other signings? I think I wanted to sign Yuri Tulusti to a deal. So we're going to sign him to a 1.95 and see if he signs. And I'm going to make one more trade because we do have a lot of depth forwards. And he's a bit more, he costs a bit more. And he was a former captain, a former assistant captain, I should say. I'm not actually sure if he was a captain. But uh, Cody McLeod, um, I just, I, I don't know. He He's sort of a, he's not necessarily the player that, I, I, I think I'd like to give him a chance on another team even. That's not my. That wasn't my first reason for trade, or trading him away. But we're gonna trade him to Montreal. Maybe he can make something happen with them. Uh, good luck in Montreal, bud. McLeod, fifth round pick. Really good deal for them. Good for them. Uh, so anything else? I think that should be good. Let's uh, go. We can go best lines for now. It'll probably make yeah Nick Patan the captain of the team in the AHL just for being there for three seconds. So we spent enough time in this video it's already 12 minutes i'm sorry it's not the greatest uh quality of video but we're just gonna roll with it right now so all the guys that we tried to sign signed so that's good and we moved out uh moved out um cody mcleod we added jacob truba and i like what our team is looking like for this next season and uh i feel confident that now with truba added um, at first I was thinking about not trading for a first round pick. I just felt like it would be too much of a risk, but we're keeping true about a good contract for long term to help us win the cup in the next couple of years here. So I'm liking what it's going to look like. So, um, let's go to, what do we need? Defenseman. We could use some prospect defenseman. We could use prospect goalie and forwards. We have a couple prospect forwards, so probably more defensive kind of players. I think I want to go for goalies because not the greatest amount of goalies so let's see there's five in the oh there are actually quite a few junior goalies this is year two right so you know what i'm gonna go to the finish league first so we're gonna try three weeks yeah we're gonna do three weeks there and we'll see how that works out for us so we'll send to the first preseason game there you go and now let's go to roster moves and make the roster moves and then uh, start the season uh, I want to get as much sim as done as I can in this episode. Probably a 30-minute video just based on how long I've taken. Um, but, yeah, we'll go off. We'll just keep on going. Um, Terramino, we're going to keep in the minors. He'll just be a depth guy to sign or that we sign just to uh, be ready for the the next whatever. You know, if we have injuries, maybe. Um, probably Dahlbeck before him, but we'll see. We'll see who goes out of the out of the lineup. Um, Patan we're going to keep in the AHL and I think we should have enough players now uh, we could actually sign a, a, a center to go in the AHL but we don't need to do that we actually have a we can put one of these guys down I'm going to do Smith because uh, Martinson uh, his morale is a bit higher and Mitchell's been with the team more longer so Smith you're going to go in the AHL help him out uh, best lines should be good and now let's go and start the season that should be enough. I'm actually going to go check out the uh, injuries 
to see what uh, what what could be maybe added because I mean not a ton of injuries really uh, 50 50 um, I feel like it hasn't been that high before so that's kind of weird um, let me just leave it there for a second injuries are on okay so you know what I can't remember do we have a lot of injuries last year someone maybe let me know what you think the injuries be I know some youtubers uh, what they do so for now I think I'm gonna try and move that down I don't want it to be too super high 15 we'll go 15 and 15 that I don't want too many injuries but like just a couple I mean I don't mind the the big injury to the star players because that I guess adds more in depth to the GM mode, makes it more realistic, I guess. But I mean, yeah. Preseason this year. I want you all to play for your jobs out there. Demanding. Got to be honest with them. So, uh, yeah, that should be it. Edit lines. Let's go. I, I will show you. Uh, I might skip this part. You know what? I'm going to skip this part. I'll show you guys the lines in a bit. Okay, guys, we are back and I finished up the lines. So these are what, uh, our team will look like going into the year two season, the 2017-18 uh, season. Landis Gog, Duchesne McKinnon, Grigorenko, Soderberg, Marchand, Rantanen, Colborn, Parento, Como, Mitchell, and Bork. And then along with that, on the special teams, I'll show you the power play. Viznovsky's on the top line. We're going to see how that works out. And then four-man power play. There we go. Um, let's get McKinnon on there. Just uh, He is our top player, arguably, so... We're going to get him on there. Uh, I actually just realized Parento's in there. That's okay. I like to go with more of a veteran kind of guy. Um, I'd like Grigorenko to be in there, but if it doesn't work out, maybe we'll move uh, one of those guys to the point instead of Viznovsky. If he's not doing well, maybe we'll take out Truba or Johnson, or maybe we'll just switch Parento out. But for now, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Uh, Grigorenko's getting enough time on the second line. Uh, there's the penalty kill. I want to make sure our top guys are killing off the penalties because that's what they're there for. They're there to help uh, solidify the team's defense as well. That's why we got guys like Landis Cog, Soderberg, and Duchesne as well, who has a pretty solid defense category. And then Como's there just because he needs ice time. And his defense is not horrible, but you know what? It's 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 pretty. It can it's serviceable. It can get there. And then Colborn, we're gonna put on the on the other penalty kill on the three man penalty kill line because. Just give him more time because he was originally supposed to be a second liner, but it uh, didn't quite work out for him. So we're going to give him some more ice time. There's all the other stuff if you just wanted to pause it. But, I mean, it's pretty much just the regular lines. Toulouse, we're going to put in if we need to, if we have top six injuries possibly or Parento, we'll switch them. And then if it's like more of a depth injury, we may do Martins and depending. Um, basically, Toulouse, anywhere from third to, fir third to first line. And then uh, Martinson from anywhere from like third to fourth line. We'll have to see who goes out. We just want to get the similar player types in. If, especially if we're doing well, then we want to keep those kind of players in. Uh, we're Koch. Uh, we're going to keep him out of the lineup just because his morale... or. His morale is good, but his overall job because of the last season playing in the AHL instead of not the NHL, which is kind of unfortunate. That's why I have Viznovsky starting, but maybe we'll throw in Mirkosh and see if he can grow back to his original self if Viznovsky is not performing. So we'll have to uh, really check out on our depth lines and our main lines. We have to check on auto lines because we got lots of new faces here. We want to make sure that they're performing uh, and they're with the right guys that they need to be with so then our team can be successful. So we'll have to see how that works. So in the preseason, we got two wins, one against Chicago, 4-1, and one against Minnesota was 2-0. Uh, we lost against St. Louis. Don't know what the score of that game was. We lost to Nashville 2-1, lose to Dallas 6-3, and Winnipeg, we come out with a 4-3 overtime loss. So um, unfortunately, I believe the start of the preseason usually is when guys are still putting in their weaker players. There's the loss against St. Louis. Um, I think that this is when teams start putting in their real players, but this can't happen in the real season. We can't be losing to these divisional teams. Not at all. That can't. That's not acceptable. The big thing is we have two games against St. Louis right off the bat, so these are like must-win games. So, you know what, just to start off the season, uh, I don't mind actually doing a slow sim for this one uh, just because it is important games. Uh, especially if we're down in the standings, let me know if you guys want to see me doing slow sim for that games. Maybe that'll make it more interactive and we'll see uh, what's going on. So um, I'm not going to check out too much of the preseason. That was the preseason. This is the real season. I'm going to give the, the, the our team the shot to start off on the right foot for the regular season. So let's go in St. Louis 
first period, and it's 1-1. Pietrangelo gets uh, St. Louis up on the board first, and then uh, Marchand gets one on Oplica. So uh, young prospect goaltender playing in St. Louis now. He developed, and uh, so if he's a young guy, then uh, it proves he doesn't have much experience. We should be able to take this to our advantage and get some offense. So let's go, boys. Second period. And Kevin Shattenkirk, their D, is just literally sniping all of them because that's all they're really good at is their defense, right? So, guys, you really got to be getting more offense right now. I don't know how Varlamov's letting two goals on 13 shots, 14 shots. I mean, guys, we're outplaying them power play. It just proves that maybe Wisniewski isn't ready. He's, I think he's done. Yeah, that's going to be pretty much the end. And Johnson gets one quick, but Upshaw finishes up to make it 4-2. I didn't want to spend too much more time on that. That's really unfortunate. It is going to be a back-to-back -back game, so you know what? I really, we can't be losing this second game. So let's see, can we hold the team meeting at all? Uh, no, we can't. We can't be a, we can't do a motivational speech at all. So we really need to get a win here. So I'm gonna change the lines already, right out of the gates. It's pretty crazy. Uh, defense. I think um, what I'm gonna try is I'm gonna do. Uh, let's do Begress with Truba and then Zadarov with Viznovsky, maybe that'll help. I didn't really want to do that kind of a change, but I just noticed that if we have two two ways and then defensive and offensive, maybe that chemistry from NHL 16 um, and NHL 15, new gen, maybe that'll uh, get us uh, the win for the next game. So if we switch up the defense a bit, maybe, I mean, Begress wasn't get too much time, so maybe if we uh, even it out a bit more, because I mean, arguably, let's say that I think we have to agree that sort of Zadarov is sort of, sort of, sort of just not actually a top four defenseman. It says he is. I think it's his physical category that's boosting him up a bit, but he has to prove it uh, right now. So Bigaros, we're going to give him the chance to prove it with Jacob Truba on that top four D. And let's see if we can bounce back with a win against St. Louis. We really need to start off on the season a lot better than we have. So let's go, boys. First period. And uh, no, Ryan Reeves scored. That's it. That's done. We're gone. We're no, yeah, we're done. Six one. There you go. Game over. As soon as Ryan Reeves scored, you knew that Varlamov is just horrible. So um, that's not acceptable. Ten goals in the first two games. And you notice how those were fourth line enforcers and a bunch of defensemen that scored. Periaco actually got the first goal of the game. So this is really not acceptable. Our defense is really struggling. So let's go and uh, look at some defense. Let's see what has a lot. Uh, nothing in the rest of the world usually isn't. Uh, dub defenseman, we'll try that. Uh, we'll go one month. I usually like going one month. That's, I think that's the magic number for me. Um, let's see. Let's go with, uh, I think we need to put in uh, Picard as our goalie, right? Because if I'm correct, uh, Picard hasn't played a game, but um, Verlano just played two games straight. So we're going to try switching up the lines. We have to get off to a good start right now, guys. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, so uh, Picard came in just because that's what he was doing. Uh, 19 saves. Did he play a game? That's weird. Okay. Well, you know what? We're going to roll with him in that either way. Uh, let's see. Who's really just not clicking at all? It is the second line and the first line. So basically our top six. That's just great. That's really something I didn't want to have to change. So you know what? Boom. Gregor Ranko's going on the top line. We're going to try it. We are going to try it. Actually, uh, Duchesne on the left wing. Oh, I was hoping that we have another sniper. We don't actually. Let's try. I'm going to try uh, something that I was not expecting to try. We're going to try putting all of our centers in their proper positions. Put the left wingers in theirs. Um, we can put uh, him there, him there. Colborn, Rantanen. No, those, are, those guys aren't playing fantastic together. So... Let's give Como a shot. He hasn't done too much power forward. You can put the power forward in that lineup right there, Colborn. Uh, give him a chance. Maybe that maybe that's work. If we have a deep center core, maybe that'll help us win games. I don't know. Uh, let's try to. Mm, he's a he's a zero. We'll try. We'll try what we got. That's all you can do right now. It is really on. It's not much. I mean, oh my gosh, it's a long video. I mean, it says 29 minutes, but. This is not a great start. Okay, guys, maybe I just got to start getting a bit hyped more. I don't know. Maybe that's what is the case because we just – it's sort of down for some reason. We we just came off a far playoff run. It can't be one of those years like um, – what is it? Like Calgary, like where you have a great playoff run. You go to the second round and after beating the Canucks in the first round, and then you go and miss the playoffs the next year. That can't be the case. We have to bounce back and at least – 
uh, become a competitive team in the season. I, I don't want to be struggling for a playoff spot. I want to have a playoff spot within the first four months or three or four months, like halfway through the season. I want to be. I don't want to be worrying about that. I want to be worrying about making our team deeper. So guys, work on your team play and let's get the win against Pittsburgh. First period and Landis Cog and Kessel. So top line guys uh, exchanging goals against uh, the respective goalies of Fleury and Picard. So Picard. One goal and seven shots. I think you're a young goalie that can come up and steal some games for us, Picard, so you got to show it right now. This is it. This is your chance. Game two. No, it's not game two. It's game three. Second period. I'm tired, boys. Oh, my gosh. Simon gets one on Picard. If I'm not correct, he's just a depth player that does nothing for their team. It's just because they can't afford guys. Guys, we have the better depth, so come on. Soderberg and Colborn, you guys are the top line centers on the bottom line. So start stepping up. Shots are exchanged. I don't know what the heck is going on, guys. You know what? I made a trade. I made this. This video has gone long enough. I'll make a video like right after the video is uploaded. So within the first couple hours, just let me know about what I need to do. It's just not the right video. It's sort of like you just you're making a video or something, and it's just not things aren't going right for you right now. So we played the first three games of the season. We lost all three of them, and I'm definitely gonna change the lines. It's probably gonna go back to our usual lines, not the ones that we had. I'm probably gonna take out uh, Viznovsky because that must be doing something. We're one of the only teams in our division without points, and that's not acceptable. Offense and defense, nothing's coming together, nothing at all. Pretty much all of us are, are zeros. So Zadorov's a plus one. Maybe that's uh, I don't know. I don't know what needs to be changed, guys. I mean, we gotta play the guys who are getting offense, and right now our top guys are sort of doing it but our defense it sucks it's it's sucking right now so we trade for truba and we were letting 20 goals per game so hey guys sorry for the little random cut there um what i actually did was i ended off the video pretty within the next bit and the next couple minutes in of the previous video um not the previous video but the previous clip i did i actually took a break in between i made my hut uh, episode and i just i felt a bit bad that the, I made the video so short so what I actually am doing I'm actually making it longer um, it's going to be hopefully only four or five minutes or so but I'm going to change the lines back to the regular way they were and I'm going to do them exactly how they should be we're going to go we're going to go best lines and that means that um, whatever it says I'm going to make a couple switches Viznovsky is playing actually well so um, I'm going to go special teams and I'm gonna put him back on there. Actually, no, I'm not. I, I was gonna have Zadarov out because people. I don't like his offensive awareness, but apparently his shot and offensive skills are good enough to have him make an offense. So we're gonna do that. Um, wait, what is Truba's stuff? Truba doesn't have his. Uh, I guess he's not an offensive player. He's a minus five right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on uh, Grigorenko because we don't have him in there. He should be getting some offense. So. Uh, I'm going to put, who's a more defensive player? Who's a, I think Marchand, I, actually Marchand, I want to have him on the point, and then we'll do him with Barry, we can have him on their 1Ts, I guess, uh, Grigorenko and Parento, we can have them on their 1Ts, uh, Soderberg, uh, Zadarov and Johnson, so that should be good, uh, building up a, a couple stuff, uh, I guess, technically, Duchesne is more the veteran player, so we will play him uh, right there, uh, let's put in the other four, let's get in Grigorenko again, uh, and this time, once again, we will put Marchand on the point, keep him on their one tees, and that should be good. McKinnon and Grigorenko. Hopefully, Grigorenko can actually get a boost uh, for the next season. Um, I think Landis Cox should still be playing the penalty kill. I'm just going to show you the lines. Just to, uh, I, I needed to make a, I just needed to take a break from this. It wasn't really turning out to be a great episode, and I wanted to make it a bit better for you. I think our team can pull out of this. And I'm going to put Duchesne back in there. We're going to make sure that all the guys that are need to be playing are playing. And that's pretty much it. Uh, goalies, scratch, there you go. There's the forwards. Um, I'm going to put them actually back on the top lines like I want them to. That's actually really weird, messed up. Let me know what you guys think. Should we put McKinnon, at, set him as a center, or should we make him a right wing now? Because that is what he did play last year, and that is sort of the position that he can play as well. So we can always switch him whenever we want, but I think I might set him as a right wing for now. Uh, there's Solberg, Soderberg. Colburn can be a center. Gregorenko, we're going to put him in the top six. And that should be should be enough, I think. Should be good. Uh, you know what I want to try is Landis Cog, although he's a first liner, previous season, like what did he do the previous season? 
he had 66 points. Marchand actually had more offense last season. So I'm going to try... Uh, I guess we have more defensive players that way, though. But you know what? I, I guess I'll try it back the way it was. And then some power play line switch. I guess uh, Como instead of Ranton. And Ranton really hasn't done much. I think he could be traded um, eventually. We'll have, to, we'll have to see what happens there. But uh, let's just go in to the next game. Hopefully with a, a win. And we're going to see uh, what happens uh, next. So let's go sim to the end of the month at least. And I, let's see if we can get some wins back in here. And Because um, it is just the start of the season. I guess I was sort of tired and thinking like, oh, well, we lost three in a row. We're n never going to come back a bit, uh, out of it. But, I mean, it was early on in the season. Look at this. Our defense necessarily hasn't been the greatest. But our our offense, I know we have just as good offense as defense. We're a really all-round team. That's what we were built to be. And I know that we can do that. Look at that. A 5 nothing shutout. I think we can come back into this. I, I just need to, like, I was sort of freaking out a bit, sort of. I wasn't actually, but... I just felt like it wasn't the greatest. And look at that. We bounced back with tons of wins. Like, we only, like, we got points in all of our games. And we got wins in most of them. So, and we were able to get some wins against Western Commons teams as well. Edmonton twice and San Jose. So, it's a lot better. Uh, I'm not going to end it off there. I like to do a bit more simming. The team is winning, so we might as well keep it going. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll only sim half through this month, but I think we can go the full month. First Dallas, a divisional team. We get a one point out of that. That's okay, but I'd like to get some more wins out of these teams. Like Minnesota, I don't know. They are 8-3-0, so they're pretty good. Let's see if we can get a win out of them. There you go. We can prove that we can beat teams like Minnesota twice. So that's very nice. 7-3-2. Uh, and two. Uh, Winnipeg, 3-2 uh, win. That's very nice. Carolina, they're... I wonder if they... They have probably some younger defense. Let's see if we can get... Uh, if we can capitalize on that, we only capitalized twice and they capitalized three times. So maybe they are becoming a bit stronger of a team. But, you know, we ha we're having a nice winning streak there. So it's nice to get a, uh, not too nice to get a loss, but I guess not to make sure our team is overconfident. Uh, let's not keep it up, though. We got to get a win uh, back to get on track. Chicago, they're 8-8-2. Eight, eight and two. We get a point out of them. That's okay. Uh, Edmonton, Anaheim, a couple more Pacific Division teams, so this could be uh, important if we are a wildcard team. It is still possible. And there's a 3-1 win against Edmonton. We just have it against Edmonton. We have their number. We know exactly what they're going to do. And we have wins against Anaheim and LA. Vancouver, uh, let's see, in Vancouver, Rogers Arena. They're 13-5-1. That's nice to see. Nice uh, winning team. Brad Marchand is injured till November 30th with a sore foot. Replaced player should put in Zulusti, and I think that should be a fair enough exchange. 5-2 loss to uh, Vancouver. That's unfortunate, but you know what? It was to Vancouver. It's no big deal. Arizona, they're a struggling team. I like to capitalize. There you go. There's a 4-2 win. San Jose, they have a similar record to us, and we lose to them 3-2. Brad Marchand is back. Let's make sure Zulusti was in there. See if it was. There you go. It was, he wasn't there, so it was okay. Uh, so Como play on the third line seems to have... Uh, been okay. Ranch to be on the fourth line, I guess. Minus three, seven assists. I don't know. Oh my gosh. That third line just clicked. Okay, so we have our our, our lines there. Uh, and the first line went back together. It's doing much better. Brad Marchand and Grigorenko. And I mean, the fourth line, they got offense, which is actually kind of nice to see. Uh, defense. I mean, how is our defense doing? Much better. Truba still minus five, but I mean, we're going to have minuses on the team. And you know what? Viznovsky, that was a nice signing. He's a, is a plus seven. So good puck moving defenseman. And that's uh, how everybody did. Let's see how Toulouse did. Uh, Mitchell was a minus two. I guess they put in Martinson. That's okay. And then plus one, one goal for Toulouse. Not bad. So there you go. Marchand is injured. I do know that. You always want to have you want to have him back in the lineup. But uh, you don't want you guys to get injured. 5-4 uh, win against Montreal. Uh, Toulouse was upset for being scratched. He's, I mean, it was just for an injury, dude. I, I, did, I told you in your contract, there was somewhere in there, there was small printing saying you're going to play only when our guys are injured <laughs> and when they're not performing. So this morale meeting is probably going to be with Toulouse. We can always trade him if we really want to. He's not going to be too happy. i got to be honest with him. Complaining isn't typically my thing, but I don't feel I deserve to be scratched. You know what? I mean, I can't argue with that. He did provide. He got seven shots in the net, and he wanted it. So let's see. Uh, complaining isn't. Yeah, he said that. Um, I know it's not ideal. Have confidence. It will be temporary. If you don't improve, you need to get used to watching press. I see a lot of hungry players on this team. and need you to work hard to get back in the lineup. I want you to step back and, and lead up. I want you to step up and lead. He doesn't need to. I, I need to. I'm not demanding from him necessarily. I don't want it to sound like I'm demanding from him. But I do see a lot of players on this. Not necessarily hungry players. And I think... 
it's not ideal. Have confidence that it'll be temporary. I'm not gonna. I don't really see he needs to get work harder to get in the lineup. You know what? I'm gonna be more calm here, um, like I want to be. And uh, that was a huge voice crack. Have confidence that it will be temporary, and he, he seemed to appreciate it. So that's nice. Um, obviously, it's number two, but I think they did fix the morale a bit more. So it's not just number two. It's actually sort of a bit more important. You gotta you gotta be honest with them. You gotta listen, and you gotta. Uh, I think they made it so then it's more proper in the right situation. So I'm liking that. Uh, who isn't really performing as well? Minus five. I mean, I can't complain with Rantanen necessarily. Bork. Uh, I mean, he the guy wants time, right? To Lusty. So why not play him? Um, uh, Rantanen as a sniper he only doesn't have a single goal. He has seven assists. Uh, you know what? How many penalty minutes does Bork have? Does he have? A, does he get a lot of penalties? Two penalty minutes. It's he's not much. AHL potentially could be dropping soon, but you know what? I think that might. You know what? Let's try. We'll try to lose D on the fourth line. Maybe that'll help get uh, Ranton in some offense. You know what? You would just want to be playing, bud. You gotta accept it, okay? If you start performing on the fourth line, maybe I'll give you third line time. Maybe I'll give you power play time. I think if he can be an offensive player, Tulusti can prove it. Or Tulusti can prove it if he wants to be a, that kind of a player. Third line is clicking right now, and I know Cole is a natural right winger and Tulusti is a natural left winger, so it would make sense, plus with the power forward playmaker sniper combination. But you know what? We're just going to go with what's winning right now. Tulusti wants ice time. Why not give it to him? Give him the shot. He's performed in the game that he had to, so let's give him, let's give him some ice time. Uh, that will be almost it, I think. Is it? Is that the end of this, uh, of the month? Is there... Yeah, that is the end of the month. So we're December 1st, our phase or whatever, just, I guess, Wenberg and Granlin may have not been signed. Minnesota seems to be doing fine, but we did climb back up, uh, higher in the division, which is much... I, I, I'm glad that we were able to, sh uh, not shake things up too much, uh, but I mean we were able to perform a lot better than we were. And now we're fourth in the in the Western Conference, so that's nice. Entire league, uh, we are, where are we? We're 12th. Let's just quickly show off our uh, stats. We are one of the highest goal-scoring teams. I like that. Defensively, we could probably improve. Um, that was one of the reasons I brought in Truba, and if he's not performing, maybe I ought to play Viznovsky there. I don't know. Maybe trying that would be good. We'll have to see. Uh, power play, let's see. Colorado, I don't see... I don't see them. Where are we? We're probably in the middle then. Uh, Colorado. What the heck? Oh, we were, yeah, we were down there a bit. We were like just, yeah, okay. So about 13th or so, I think. Power play goals against, no. Penalty kill, that's what we wanted to see. Colorado, not doing too great in that category. I think it can get better, so we may have to make a, a switch there. Uh, how is Colorado doing um, in the last couple games? Uh, probably pretty even. Yeah, five, four, and one. So, um, we had a couple losses there at the start of the season. And then we had some later on here, but we had a nice winning streak in between. So that helped us uh, get to the position we are at right now. Tyson Berry, point per game defenseman. That's what I'm talking about. He's very, he's doing very well. Uh, Duchesne, Landeskog, Marchand getting lots of offense. I like that. Uh, Soderberg, McKinnon only has 17 points, but he has 11 goals. So I'm not going to complain one so whatsoever. Uh, yeah, our defense. I mean, for what Como was doing last year, I'm appreciating this, Como. I was thinking about trading you. I'm so glad I didn't. You're doing very well. Truba, not doing too great. So you know what? If he's not performing, I got to give the ice time to the the guys that are performing. So uh, maybe try him with Bgrass in, on the top four line. Uh, maybe we've got to switch things up. But you guys can let me know about that. I'm sorry for making this video a bit longer. I just wanted to make sure it was a proper video. And you know what? Look, look what happened. We're a much better team. We're five games above 500, and that's much better. So uh, hopefully we can keep this up uh, going to the next video. But uh, as usual, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one.